Hello everyone! Good morning! Welcome to Let's Do Research with Dr. S. This is Dr. Sarah Namoko and I am your partner in your research journey. In this video, we shall be talking about theory, concepts, theoretical framework, and conceptual framework. But before we are going to understand the function and the importance of theoretical framework and conceptual framework in your thesis or dissertation projects, we're going to define terms such as theory and concept first, okay? To start with, according to Imenda, a theory has three major defining characteristics. Number one, he says that a theory is a set of interrelated propositions concepts and definitions that present a systematic point of view. Second, a theory specifies relationships between and among concepts or constructs or variables that are being studied in a study, in a project, in a research project, and that uh, a theory explains and or make predictions about the occurrence of events based on the specified relationships. Meanwhile, a concept, according to Lyer and Smith in 1999, it is an image or symbolic representation of an abstract idea. And to make it clearer, Merriam-Webster defined concept as something that is conceived in the mind. It is an abstract or generic idea that is generalized from particular instances. Now, Remember the definition of these two important concepts as we learn about theoretical framework and conceptual framework. Now let's move to theoretical framework. According to Emenda, theoretical framework is, a, is the application of a theory or a set of concepts drawn from one and the same theory. Remember, a theoretical framework is derived from one and the same theory to offer an explanation of an event or research problem. This sheds some light on a particular phenomenon. To illustrate, for example, I will share with you the theory of planned behavior by Adzen in 1991. According to this theory, attitude, subject norms, and perceived behavioral control together this shape the individual's behavioral intention and behaviors. To put this theory into a framework, into a graphical presentation, this is now what it looks like. The theoretical framework looks like. Remember, according to the theory, the attitude, the subject norm, and the perceived behavioral control together this shape the intention of a person, the behavioral intention of a person, and the behavior, the actual behavior of a person. So this is about the theory of planned behavior. Another example, the, the technology acceptance model by Fred Davis in 1986. According to this th model, the intention and use toward using technology is a function of two beliefs. These two beliefs are perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use. To illustrate that in a theoretical framework, it looks like this. Remember, the attitude of a person and the intention, the intention and the attitude of a person to use technology is defined by perceived usefulness and perceived is of yours. Take note, according to Imenda, a theoretical framework is based on one theory, okay? And it is graphically represented. In When it is now a theoretical framework, it is graphically represented. Okay, now what is the purpose of theoretical framework in your thesis or dissertation? A theoretical framework, friends, helps you in situating and contextualizing formal theories into your study. It helps guide you into your study. Also, it serves as the focus for the research and it is linked to the research problem of the study. For example, 
In the theory of acceptance model, what are the only focus of study? The only focus of study are the perceived usefulness, perceived ease of use, the behavioral intention, and the attitude towards use. That is what, what is meant by the focus. It serves as the focus of your research, meaning that your research will, will revolve only around these variables. Okay, that is the theoretical framework. Now, let's move on to conceptual framework. Conceptual framework can be a graphical or a narrative form showing the key variables or constructs to be studied and the presumed relationship between them. Okay, I'll show you one illustration. Okay, another definition, sorry. A conceptual framework is defined as an end result of bringing together a number of related concepts to explain or predict a given event. Remember the definition of concept according to Miriam Webster, it is something that is created in your mind and that it is a set of generic ideas from particular instances. So when we are going to translate that into conceptual framework, a conceptual framework is bringing up together of a different different related concepts for the purpose of explaining or predicting a given event remember friends that all the concept that concepts that are used to investigate a research problem are always they are always taken from theoretical perspective or from your literature review you can never conceptualize something apart from literature review or from theoretical perspective okay to illustrate for example you are interested to investigate the factors that affect the academic performance of students so definitely because you are interested to investigate or to study about the academic performance of the students that is your dependent variable now what are the factors that are that affect academic performance According to literature, for example, you have reviewed the literature and you have identified behavioral dif discipline, intellectual training, and student-centered. This, according to your literature review, are the factors that influence the academic performance of your student. Now, the problem is we, we don't have a single theory to explain the relationships of these variables. So, to do, to do this you need a conceptual framework so for the relationship between behavioral discipline and academic performance you need the behaviorist theory by bf skinner in the same way for the relationship between intellectual training and academic performance you need the cons cognitivist theory by john piaget and for the student-centered pedagogy, the relationship between student-centered pedagogy and academic performance, you need the constructivist theory of Jerome Brunner in 1960. You see, since you don't have a single theory to explain the relationships among these variables, you need to have a conceptual framework. Okay? You need to have a... This is the time that you have a concept... This is the time that you will need a conceptual framework. Now, I'll give you another example. For example, here, the factors that, the factors that influence the acceptance and use of technology in teaching among higher education institution educators. Now, according to the Unified Theory of Acceptance and Use of Technology, performance expectancy, effort expectancy, social influence, uh, they they are determinants of the behavioral intention and the behavioral intention and facilitating conditions are determinants of a person's actual use of technology now that is that theory however in this study the researcher have identified pedagogical belief as a moderating variable and you don't have we there is no theory that covers the UTAUT model plus the pedagogical be belief. So all in all, if you take this together, this is now a conceptual framework. Okay? Now what is the importance? Why do we need conceptual framework in our thesis or, or in our dissertation? This is because 
the conceptual framework is mostly used by researchers when existing theories are not applicable or is not sufficient in creating a firm structure for the study. Okay? So that's the time that you need conceptual framework. Now, where do you put a theoretical framework in your thesis or in your dissertation? According to Mertens, in 1998, the theoretical framework influenced every decision made by the researcher in carrying out the research. Therefore, it needs an early mention in the dissertation or thesis writing. A few years after, do ye word do ye weird as cited in sire said that the theoretical framework needs to be shown to the readers right at the onset of the thesis writing or dissertation writing therefore the student is supposed to select and clarify the theoretical framework from the time the dissertation topic is initially conceptualized in other words you put your theoretical framework in your chapter one now, how about conceptual framework? Conceptual framework is mostly placed in the chapter where the literature review is discussed. It is in this chapter that the theoretical perspectives of the main variables or constructs are rigorously reviewed. In most dissertation or thesis papers, the literature review is, the dis is discussed in chapter 2. Therefore, you put your conceptual framework in your chapter 2. Now, to give us better understanding as to the difference between conceptual framework and theoretical framework, I will be reading with you the comparison between the two, okay? Theoretical framework provides a general or broader set of ideas within which a study belongs. Meanwhile, conceptual framework refers to a specific or narrower ideas that a researcher utilizes in his or her study. Theoretical, theoretical framework is based on existing theory or theories in the literature which has been tested and validated by other scholars. Conceptual framework, on the other hand, is based on the concepts which are the main variables in a study. Theoretical framework is the, is the form of a model that pivots a study with its exponents and the results of their studies. Conceptual framework is the researcher's own constructed model that he or she uses to explain the relationship that exists between or among the variables in the study. And it can also be an adaptation of a model and an, in an existing theory which, it, which the researcher adapts to suit his or her research project. A theoretical framework is well-developed, designed, and accepted. Meanwhile, a conceptual framework is designed, its design is not accepted, but it is a proposal of the researcher's answer to the research problem that he or she has defined. Theoretical framework offers a focal point for approaching the unknown research in a specific field of inquiry, while a th conceptual framework is the framework that shows logically how the research inquiry should be undertaken. Lastly, a theoretical framework is used to test hypotheses, to predict and control the situations within the context of a research inquiry while a conceptual framework is aimed at encouraging the development of a theory that would be useful. Okay? Now, to recap, theoretical framework is based on one theory. Now, if your study has no single theory to anchor upon, then that's the time that you will use conceptual framework. Theoretical framework is written in Chapter 1, while conceptual framework is written in Chapter 2. Okay, for more uh, readings, you may refer to the references which I have cited in this uh, presentation. Again, this is Dr. Sara Namoko and I am your partner in your research journey. Thank you very much and goodbye.